everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. And look, normally we'd be sitting here, oh, we got all this news to talk about and all these things, but I actually have a different conversation I want to have today. Sure, we do have a Splatoon 3 Direct happening this week. You can go check out my video on that news or just watch my live stream or watch our podcast discussion on it on Wednesday. You know, look, there's going to be lots of opportunities to talk about Splatoon 3. Heck, we'll probably end up talking about it tonight on live stream. But today I actually want to have a conversation that's actually about the lack of news, lack of reports, lack of rumors, lack of leaks around something that we had previously for really years gotten information about. And that is on a supposedly upgraded Nintendo Switch of some type. We've been tentatively calling it Switch Pro for a couple of years. Before that, new Nintendo Switch, maybe even Switch 2. I mean, there's rumors dating all the way back to 2017, but here we are in 2022 and frankly, there hasn't been a whole lot out there. There's been a few things minor here and there from like the 4chan world, but nothing that's actually been concrete from the same sources we were getting concrete information from before, such as Eurogamer, such as, you know, Takahashi Machizuki, even respected insiders like Emily Rogers and Natrick have been essentially silent on any sort of new stuff about Nintendo Switch Pro or Switch 2 this year. And I want to address all of this because I have been at this for a long time. For those who don't know, I have been reporting on Nintendo news and Nintendo leaks and rumors for 24 years, long before I was ever a YouTuber. I mean, you can go check the About section of this YouTube channel and say, oh, it was founded in 2008. Yeah, I've been doing it since before this channel was founded. Founded, but even back then, we weren't really doing that on this channel. It was a Zelda channel. We had walkthroughs and top 10 music and a bunch of other random stuff. It really wasn't until about 2017, after I left Zelda Informer, procured the old Zelda, Zelda Informer YouTube channel, converted it to Nintendo Prime, that we really started diving into news here. But I used to be editor-in-chief at that website. I also was editor-in-chief at Gamnesia, which... <laughs> What a shocker, both of those websites after I leave basically no longer exist, so that's weird. Uh, I also worked at places like Nintendo Everything and uh, even applied once to, to write at Nintendo Life and was being offered a position but then declined. I don't know, I've been kind of all over the place, but here is why I, I wanna have this conversation. A common misconception is that people like Jeff Grubb, Takahashi Machizuki, uh, and even the people over at Eurogamer, maybe Imran Khan as well, all these actual journalists are lying to you. Now, I'm not one to sit here and pretend narratives aren't made, personal opinions aren't shoved in, and that there isn't some sort of benefit to lying, for starters. There's not a lot of punishment for it. If I worked at a major outlet like, say, IGN, and I wanted to say my own sources are saying, hey, look, we're gonna get a brand new Nintendo Switch in 2023 with 4K DLSS. And it's gonna obviously have upgraded Joy-Cons and some other aspects to it. A lot of people would go, huh, that's a really reputable website. But also, look at all the clicks that article is getting. Th thousands, millions, billions. I mean, this is why YouTubers have often accused to cover it a lot. I'm gonna be accused in this very video down in the comments. Just wait. There'll be at least one down there saying, oh man, Nintendo Prime is just clickbaiting and, 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 and trying to get our views and he's just trying to get all of that many. Like, well, for, I mean, I basically do YouTube for a living at this point. We'll have a video on that at a later time. Uh, but that's not really the point. The point is I'm getting kind of tired of reading about how big of a liar some of these actual journalists are. Even though I just described, hey, they can make those, those, those articles, get all those clicks and call it a day. I mean, the writer of the article, doesn't get paid more because it gets more clicks, but maybe their contract gets renewed. Maybe at the next review, maybe you know your manager ends up looking at, oh man, look how many views you drove to the website. Let's give you a bigger payday down the line, right? You can see how there could be some incentives in there. And maybe there is an incentive-based program where you get a bonus if your article gets a million views or 10 million views. So sure, there could be some structures in the contracts that we're not gonna be aware of because those contracts are private. But here's what we are aware of. There is one thing that prevents a journalist from outright lying like that. And it's a pretty major thing. Outright lying and or stealing information and committing plagiarism, both of those are career suicide. That's right, career suicide. If you are caught in the act of making information up, you are no longer hireable in 
the video game journalism world and probably not hireable anywhere. If you are Philip Mewson, to use a really bad example, but a really, you know, obvious one, and commit plagiarism and stealing other people's work and taking credit for it, you will become unhireable in all of journalism. The biggest thing that prevents the outright lies is that. Now, that doesn't mean the random people on Twitter, the Samus Hunters, the Marco Maros, the Silex Hunters, uh, your 4chan poster, your Redditor poster, that doesn't prevent them from spreading misinformation because of course they can, they're not accountable. They're not video game journalists. If they lie to you, there's no negative impact to them personally because you don't even know who they are. They could just spin up a new random account and start doing the same crap all over again if they want to avoid the backlash. It's really not that difficult to do that. But to be an actual video game journalist, to be accountable for the things you put out there matters. And there is a big difference, and, and this, is, this is what sucks about today's world, is we have entered the point where journalists aren't just writing about news, now they're giving their opinions, sometimes through written work, sometimes through podcasts or video features. We're no longer just focusing on here's the report, here's the news, here's the facts, here's what we did, and here's what we vetted, here's where we think the source is from and why you should believe us. Instead of just focusing on that, we start getting into, man, what do I actually think about this news? And for the longest time, back in the golden era of video game journalism, that was actually left to talking heads. So you would have podcasts out there, you would have certain other outlets, even the early days of YouTube, where there'd be people like me who don't, don't work in the industry and aren't a journalist, at least wasn't at that time, where you could go, you know what, let's talk about all this news because we're not the ones getting the news directly, we're reporting on it from others, so instead of just reporting on it, let's give you our thoughts, and I've built my entire YouTube channel around doing that, I'm doing it in this very video, but the reason I bring up that it's career suicide for real journalists to outright lie to get clicks is because while there is those tangible benefits of the clicks and the getting up there, the moment you are caught in that lie, not only is your entire career dissected, your entire career is over and you now get paid no money. You might lose your pension, you might lose your retirement, you might lose all your medical benefits. Literally, it could be gone just like that if you are actually lying. And I know a lot of you are gonna say, but Nate, I watch some of the major news networks. They lie all the time. So what's preventing the lying here? There's a difference. The facts aren't lied about. It's the opinions that get you. The narrative, the agenda of that particular writer, group of writers, or outlet that gets you. The raw facts don't change. So if a writer, a, a, a writer like Pierre Schneider, one of the founders of IGN, puts out an article or in a podcast that he has sources that have told him that X, Y, and Z is going to happen and a new switch is coming. That's the raw information. Anything he says around that information is opinion and can push a narrative one way or another. And it's very difficult at times when sometimes the raw information is presented through an opinion such as, look, the Nintendo Switch is going to be coming out in 2023 because my sources told me that it's in the works and it's actually uh, about to be mass produced. Separate the raw information from the opinion. The opinion in that would be that the Nintendo, the Nintendo Switch is launching in 2023. The raw information is, the Nintendo, my sources say, the Nintendo Switch is being mass produced right now. He's inferring from factual information his own personal opinion and agenda that maybe he's using histronomics or whatever to kind of maybe spin it into a fact that's not actually a fact. And this happens so much that it becomes so infuriating. And I don't blame you for getting confused. I don't blame you for watching channels like me where I do that sometimes because I am so enthusiastic and, and, and happy that sometimes the raw information is too intermixed with opinion. And so it's hard to separate the two. Now I try really hard to give you the facts first, the opinion second, but even then some people will read into the opinion as if, as if it's an extension of the facts rather than just a discussion about those facts. So what is the down low with the damn Switch Pro or the new Switch or any new hardware from Nintendo? Why aren't we hearing anything? Well, because there's nothing new to say. The information hasn't changed. The last information we got was that it's gonna be more powerful, have 4K DLSS, and is in production somewhere. 
and that dev units exist. And actual developers have their hands on it, including 11 developers, some of them named by Takahashi Machizuki. Now there was this report that came out last week from Nikkei that Takahashi Matsuzuki kind of mistranslated to be, oh, well, you know, hey, Nikkei is saying that there will be no new hardware in this current fiscal year, which there might not be. That might not be an incorrect statement when it's all said and done. But it turns out, you know, because it's a paid article and people paid for it and got official translations and big translations done on it, that was never actually said by Nintendo. In fact, the exact line from Nick Cade didn't really even say that. In fact, they really phrased that exact line as they don't expect a new Nintendo Switch hardware by the end of this current fiscal year. Giving a personal opinion, the article actually clarifies that it's an opinion versus a statement from Nintendo. But unfortunately, that's the way things get lost in translation. And you would figure Takahashi Machizuki, who speaks and reads fluent Japanese, wouldn't get something like that fundamentally wrong. But he just did kind of a quick browse over and threw up a tweet. And that's the problem. That was a little bit of a journalistic issue, a little snafu there, but it also wasn't a report. He didn't write an entire article on Bloomberg stating, oh, there's not gonna be a Nintendo Switch. Because, like, he even admitted in the tweet. He wasn't really sure if that's exactly what was meant or if Nintendo actually said anything. So he admitted in the tweet, he really wasn't sure that that initial read through was actually what was said or was inferred in the right way, that it needs maybe some deeper diving and, and better translation. So he even inferred in the tweet, but it didn't matter. Didn't stop the internet from running with it. Didn't stop every YouTuber on the planet from putting out there that there's, this isn't gonna happen. And when I talked about it, I noted heavily that's not what actually was said, but didn't matter. I'm a little tiny YouTuber. No one's paying attention to good old Nintendo Prime over here. They like to be misinformed because clickbait and trying to stir up drama is just something people love for some reason. So here's what I'm going to tell you right now and the point of this video. These game journalists aren't lying to you about the information. We haven't heard any new information because there is nothing new to share right? All the information that was stated last year and early this year hasn't changed. The Switch Pro 2, whatever it is, is in production somewhere. Not mass production, but is in production. Dev units do exist. 4K DLSS is a basis for how you can maybe expect the chipset to work. And that's pretty much it. There was a little bit you could infer from the NVIDIA leak, but even that's not 100% sure and not even backed by these actual reports. So here's what I'll just tell you. Something's coming, and it, pure logic alone tells you this. As of March 3rd of 2023, it will have been six years. The Wii lasted seven before we got something new. I'm just throwing out there that by the end of 2023, there probably will be something, if not the end of 2024, if not the end of 2025. But you kind of get the idea that something's in the works. Shintura Furukawa is not even denying that. If we just want to look at Nintendo's statements, he said last year, well, Switch is in the middle of its life cycle still, that of course they're working on new hardware. He said it himself. They're always working on something new. So yes, there's new hardware in the works. Then this year, he said, hey, when asked about new hardware, you know what? I'm not even going to talk about it. No comment. So look. Clearly something's coming. I don't know when. Have patience. There is no new information in this video other than these journalists aren't lying to you. At least not about the raw facts. You might not like their opinions, you might not like their takes, their agendas, whatever they're pushing spun around the facts, but the raw facts they're reporting aren't lies. And now you might go, well then Nate, why didn't we get a Switch Pro last year? Takahashi Machizuki said so. Because he combined different reports together. All the information he got from manufacturing turned out that it was actually about the Switch OLED and the facts he was getting from devs was about that other system because the devs wouldn't have had a development unit Switch OLED because they didn't need one. So they had different dev units than was being manufactured and he combined them and just made a journalistic mistake in assuming that they were the same device. A mistake that, honestly, if I was in the same situation and I had manufacturer information on mass production on this 7-inch OLED screen, and then you also had information from developers on a new dev kit, you can kind of throw it together and think that they're the same thing. I could see how that happens. It was a mistake, and it is a mistake he actually did apologize for last year, but, you know, we just look over the facts of that situation and just decide he's a liar, that Natrix a liar, that, you know, all these people, Imran Khan and Eurogamer, they're all liars. I think that that's just an easy cop-out way to say you're disappointed because of their reports and that device not being here yet. 
Here is the reality of every situation out there. Plans change. Plans for my videos this week changed. This video was supposed to be a completely different one. I had a video yesterday done, edited, ready to go that got completely scrapped that I teased a little bit this morning announcing Splatoon 3 Direct. Plans change. If they change around here behind the scenes, I can't imagine how much they change at a corporate level. So for sure, folks, sit back, relax, enjoy your Switch, your Xenoblade, your Splatoon 3 coming, your Mario Paswab, your new Pokemon, Breath of the Wild 2 next year. Enjoy the games because they're going to keep flowing. And new hardware will come when new hardware comes. I understand other people do exciting things, whether it's, you know, new phones like, you know, what is this, the S22 Ultra or the iPhone 14 coming out, uh, or, you know, devices like the Steam Deck or, you know, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and, who knows, slim models and the works for those. Those are all exciting, and so will be the next Nintendo hardware. I know a lot of people think we need new Nintendo hardware, and I hear you. It's using a chip from 2015, and we're in 2022. I get it, and new hardware's coming. Whenever Nintendo's able to readily get it out, whether it's because of manufacturing delays, whether it's just because they're waiting on the chipsets to get cheaper, whether they want to pack more RAM into it, but again, prices, whether they're still working out if it's going to be backwards compatible. I don't want them to rush something out. I, when they launch, I want it to be ready. I don't want a PS5 situation where things are scalped all hell and nobody can readily buy a system for two years. I don't want a situation where it rushes out, but there's this whole new online system that launches two years later, like Nintendo Switch, and then they decide to up the price again. And I don't want it to launch where there's no backwards compatibility now, but maybe there'll be added backwards compatibility in four years. I don't want this thing rushed out the door. Whatever they're working on, let it come when it's ready. And yeah, we can still speculate and still talk about it like we just did today, but just know these journalists aren't lying to you about the facts of that situation. There's just nothing new to say because nothing new has happened. The facts from last year and earlier this year are still the facts. There's something new coming. We have an idea of a couple things it can do, and that's that. Now we just kind of wait until we're closer to when Nintendo's actually making that move to get ready to launch it, which who knows? Maybe that move's coming in the next couple months and they're going to announce it in September, launch it this holiday, or launch it with Breath of the Wild 2, or they'll wait until next year to talk about it. But the moves are going to come, and you'll know it's coming when new information starts to come out. Buckle up, stay patient, and I'll catch you in the next video.